Hey guys, been a while. Sorry, been kind of busy. That stuff right there, that was out of a uh, 2013 GT. Um, put a stall converter in it, aluminum single piece drive shaft, and uh, full Bassani exhaust. Did that last night. But anyway, welcome to Loud But Slow. If you're not a subscriber, please subscribe. If you are, thank you. Um, today, I know I said the next video is probably going to be a, um, a walk around with the car, but it's been raining a lot here in Texas. Like, a lot. So I haven't been able to do that yet because it's just, I'm looking for a nice day to do it. Meanwhile, if you guys remember, yeah, the bumper's off the car, I'll explain that in a minute. If you remember at the dyno, the clutch slipped, kind of destroyed it. Found out why, one of those things, could have probably fixed Well, we were on the dyno, but didn't know at the time, and any time on the dyno spent, is more time you get charged. So, in the sake of saving some money, I we just ran it like it was. When I got home, started lifting the car over, trying to figure out why, because it was a spec stage two plus and yeah it was a little old but it, i mean i don't think it should have been slipping at seven pounds of boost found out that the clutch cable had failed and it was holding the clutch pressed about halfway which is what made it fail yeah so um i got a clutch i did go with the ram um i will show that later it's uh, I think it's rated at 650 or 700. It's a puck style. Um, I think it's got 3900 friction material. Um, I'll show that later whenever we get to that point. Um, this video is just going to be about removing the transmission <clears throat> because then I got to send the flywheel out to get resurfaced and when I get it back then we'll do a video about installing the transmission. Um, I'm going to try to go over everything that it takes to do so. Um, so if you want to do this yourself, you can see that it's not that hard. It's just nuts and bolts. So, uh, the reason the bumper's off the car is because I'm having a, um, a noise I'm trying to find. I got some parts coming for that too. We'll talk about it when that time comes. Um, but, um, yeah, so let's get, let's get started on, uh, removing this transmission. As you can see, I already have it positioned on the lift. So we can lift it up. Um, a lift isn't mandatory to pull the transmission. I've done it many times without a lift, but it does help a lot. Um, first step, let's disconnect the battery. You gotta remove the starter and that starter wire is hot at all times. So if you don't disconnect the battery, you can get sparks and could pop the main fuse. So first step, disconnect battery, which my battery is <clears throat> in the trunk. right there so gonna get that disconnected I think it's just a 10 millimeter oh I don't have factory cable ends I think it would be a 10 or an 8 if you did have factory cable ends mine's a 3 8 so uh, get that disconnected and then we'll come back as you see battery cables off use negative or positive don't matter just take one of the sides off Now we're gonna come around to the lift and lift the car up. <laughs> okay, moving underneath the car. Most times you'd have exhaust down here. You'd have a pipe that ran through there like through right here and a pipe that ran through right here if you still have that you would have to remove it uh, this is your mid pipe and then your cap back you would at least want to remove your mid pipe um, with a most times you can finagle the dry shaft away from the cap back but if it's in your way move it but after you get that done you're going to want to remove your starter you got 
a 13 and a 10 that hold on your 13 here and then your 10 here. So you can remove that and then you have three 10s. One here, one, I know you probably can't see it, but there, and then one all the way around the top. So one on the top can be a booger to get to, but you can get it. <clears throat> so we're gonna remove that starter. And then after that, I'm gonna go into um, take the clutch cable out. This is a new clutch cable since the other one was an issue. Not really liking the way it's routed, I know, me neither, but I'm trying different routing ways so I don't fault another clutch cable because um, I only use the factory Ford ones. It's the only ones I trust and they're a little pricey. Working at Ford helps, but still a little pricey. So uh, yeah, I'm gonna go ahead and remove that clutch cable. All you do here is you're gonna take a pry bar, push this in, to move this into the bigger hole here and then you can move the clutch cable out I do have this um, uh, clutch play spring kit by Maxim Motorsports so uh, that will come off slide off and then you have a pin here <coughs> that you uh, slide down it's just like a little clip in piece you know slide that down and then your clutch cable will slide out this way so yeah I'm gonna go ahead and do that real quick and then uh, I'll come back and show you Okay, starter's off, right there, <clears throat> and clutch cable, it's right here, As you can see it's off. A couple things I forgot to mention, <clears throat> is there will be a dust shield plate that goes right here, and bolts right there with an 8mm, you might, you're probably still going to have that on there. Mine is usually on there, it's off because I was doing some inspecting, trying to figure out why the clutch slipped. Um, that's why mine is off, but usually it would be on there. Um, another little thing I didn't think about is I have a tubular K member. Um, if you do not have a tubular K member, some of these things will be a little bit harder to get to, like the starter, but still doable. Um, by any means will it be hard, it'll just be a little bit harder. So, <clears throat> um, I guess in my case right now it helps because I can show you guys a few more things with the tubular cam member that it doesn't take up as much room as the um, the factory cam member. <clears throat> so I guess now what we're gonna do is remove this drive shaft. <clears throat> you always mark your drive shaft before removing it because you wanna keep it in that same uh, notation. If you have it off 180 degrees or whatever, <clears throat> it might cause a vibration. So these are 12 millimeter, 12 point sockets. Um, really helps if you have a wiggle socket to get those. And then on the transmission side, that just slides out. Um, it'll just slide right out of the, the housing. So I'm gonna do that. Then I'm also going to remove this wiring harness. It's got the O2 sensor plug-ins. This, uh, this is your reverse lights. And uh, that's all that's up there. So yeah, we're going to remove those things and uh, just let that hang down in the drive shaft and then we do have to go back up top to do the shifter um, we have to remove that shifter out i'm gonna do that and i'll be back soon and with you two magic in seconds <laughs> milliseconds that was done it was it didn't take that long so drive shafts out wiring harness is disconnected so this, I forgot to point out that sensor up there that would have to be unplugged. I'm, I'm, if I remember, I think that's your, uh, your like your, like your neutral safety switch, if, if I remember correctly. And then that is your, um, your, your reverse lights. Um, when your reverse gets engaged, it sends power to the reverse lights. But um, this is a TR3650. It's a built transmission. If you have a factory one, it's the same thing. A T45 that also comes in the new edge body style is the same thing. Um, maybe this, I think on the T45, I remember my, it, it goes in this way. Um, sorry, when you're looking, the, the reverse sensor goes in this way. But I mean, all in all, it's the same. Um, just maybe diff, slightly different locations. So now on the bottom, all we have left is the bell housing bolts, which there's nine of and then your your bracket bolts here 
they're all, everything down here is a 13, but before we do that, we have to go undo the shifter that's inside the, the car. So I'm gonna lower it down and uh, get doing that. Okay, so now we're gonna come over to the driver's side, and that is the shifter, the boot, that bezel is what we're gonna be removing. I'm gonna grab a couple of tools that I'll need, and I'll show you guys how to do that. All right, so to do this, um, it's gonna it's gonna be different for your car than mine, um, unless you have my exact setup. So. This is, a, this is a Ford Racing shift ball, and then this is what they call a beauty nut. That beauty nut has two slits in it that get held on by this. And you find the spot. So, kind of had that out of camera angle, but it's got like a little, um, little groove right there that this sits in, and then it'll lock into place to hold that beauty nut so what you're going to do is you're going to hold this hold the um the shift ball and then you're going to tighten the nut and when you tighten that it's going to drop it down and unlock it off of the shift ball i'm one-handed here so i need two so i'm going to set the camera down really quickly okay so now that that's done, now you can untwist your shift ball. And then the beauty nut. It's just a threaded nut that's fancy, I guess. Okay. And then what you're going to do is you have clips that go one here, one here, here, and here. Uh, to undo that, you're just going to pull up right here. And then on that side, pretty simple. You're going to have a connector here on the back side of that. Again, I need two hands, so I'm going to have to set the phone down. Okay, there it is. You have a dummy connector here if you do not have traction control, and then you have your cigarette lighter connector. There they are right there. This is the MGW shifter. I think this is the standard length one because you can go lower and make it really short, and come higher and make it a little bit to the comfort one. Um, because I have this, this Allen wrench, and then these two things right here, which is would take off that shift ball, and then this Allen wrench is for the Allens on these. These stay in my center console. They don't leave my car. Um, I never want to be hunting these down or hunting an Allen wrench down to remove that. So these right here stay in my car. They never leave. <clears throat> um, on this, since uh, you're just going to... If you had the factory shifter, uh, it's either two tens or two thirteens that lock it to this um, shift shift stud right here that goes down to your transmission. But on this one, all I'm going to do is um, loosen up these. Two, there's two Allen, two Allen bolts here and two here. Since this adjustment's not changing, all you have to do is loosen up this one. I get the Allen wrench back into. There it is. And if you guys, if you have one of these shifters or you're looking to buy one of these, I love my MGW shifter. Um, you, you don't have to slam these down. These don't ha have to be stupid tight, just snuggle work. Um, the, their, set, their system they use here is extremely effective. It works very, very well. Um, I have not had any issues with this thing rotating or slipping at all. And I, as you can tell, I mean, I'm not putting much force on it. They're, they're just snug down. That's that right there. 
Movie W. Um, I, don't, I don't guess it has the part number on it. So now that that's off, you're going to. There's four eight millimeters. So one there, one right there, one there, and one there. And that's going to remove this dust shield right here. So I'm going to go do that real quick. Um, what I use is a eight millimeter wiggle socket. An extension with my um, quarter inch gun. You can do it by hand. I just I got the tools, so I'm going to use them. It helps make things quicker. So I'll be back in a uh, YouTube fashion. It'll be done in a millisecond. And just like that, it's gone. So here's yeah, a little camera trick. Why not? So as I said, it's just those four eight millimeters, and it's gone. So now you could. That's the MGW shift plate. You could remove that. You don't have to though. Um, what I like to do is because the transmission is gonna come down and back, I just go ahead and put this in third gear. And it gives me that, I mean, it's just a little bit of room, but it gives me that much more room so when I come down, I can go back a little bit further. So now everything up here is complete. Now we're gonna lift the vehicle back up and um, do the bell housing bolts. And then, you know, we'll, we'll go from there. Okay, now back up in the air. We can do bell housing bolts. Now there's things you can use to make this a lot easier, like a transmission jack, which yes, I'm going to use it. Um, if you don't have it, you, I mean, me and a buddy's muscled them down before. It does make it a little bit more of a pain in the butt, but we've done it before, um, a few times actually. But if you have the tools, use them, um, work, work smarter not harder so um there is two on the top one on each side and then there's three down this side there's two down this side and then there's two up front one there and one there <clears throat> now, <clears throat> i think it's nine total Let's see two three four five six seven eight nine yep nine total and uh, that's all the bell housing bolts. Um, after you get the transmission jack supported here, and you wrap like a bungee cord or a strap around it to hold it to the transmission jack, you can remove these 13s here and 13s here on the transmission brace, and then you can drop the transmission down a few inches, which will make it a lot easier to get to those top two bolts. What you're gonna use, what you're gonna want to use to get to these bell housing bolts, which makes it a, I mean, it's almost necessary, is a long extension. This is, I think, a, I don't know how long it is, let's find out. Let's see if I can do this one handed. Can't do it one handed, but that is a, a 20 inch extension. But I also pair that up with my longest snap-on extension, which is probably, I don't know, 10 inch probably. It's like half of that. Both of those combined with a wiggle 13 makes it pretty easy to get to those bell housing bolts. Now, not everybody's got a long extension. You can add all the little extensions you have together with a wiggle socket and a shallow 13. I mean, everybody's pretty much got those tools right there and do the same thing. Um, I just, being a mechanic, I have the actual tools. So I'm gonna go ahead and get this transmission jack underneath there and um, put a little strap on it and do the, do the mount bolts, four mount bolts and then the bell housing bolts. So uh, we'll see you guys soon. Just wanted to <clears throat> show you guys what I was talking about. And so I have the transmission brace out. It's secured to the transmission jack. Now if I just lower this down a little bit, try to do this as slow as possible. You see the gap up there is getting bigger and bigger. Now that's, that's about, but all you're gonna get is a few inches. Huh? 
leaking tranny fluid now. But that's all you're gonna get is just a few inches. Um, if you didn't drain your transmission, you might want to. I'm gonna put a glove over this and then zip tie the glove to it so I can catch the tranny fluid. Um, I just forgot to do that. But as you can tell, you had a few more inches up there. That's what you need to get to those top two bolts. So I'm gonna put that glove on and get those top two bolts and then get the rest of them, which are all, the rest of them are pretty easy. Okay. All the bell housing bolts are out now. Um, something you won't have is this is the old filter relocator for the um, on three kit. You put a, uh, you can kind of see it right there. You put a plate there. Yeah, it's leaking. I got one fitting that I need to snug up. Um, you put one, um, you put a, like a, the threads in just like an oil filter does there and it's got two lines that come back. You know here, the bracket I made just use, uses a uh, bell housing bolt to mount it. So you won't have to worry about that. All I'm doing is pulling this off and then gonna let it hang. Um, but, so I have all the bell housing bolts out. So now what you're gonna do is you're going to let the transmission down a little bit and then wiggle it out because you have a uh, output shaft that goes into the back of the motor. Um, that's what your clutch rides on. Um, this backing plate you see right here, that stays with the block. So when you pry, pry between that and the um, bell housing. Just a couple little tips for you. I'm gonna go ahead and uh, start doing that and this transmission will be out and then we'll remove the clutch. Okay, there's the transmission. A little dirty, I might even power wash it off tomorrow on my lunch. <coughs> but there it is. There's your throw bearing, which we're gonna be replacing that with a Ford one. Don't use the aftermarket ones, they're no bueno. They, they'll go out, I promise you guaranteed just buy a ford part number one and that is the throttle bearing and the pilot bearing which I'm, i'll show you whenever we get the clutch off <clears throat> the pilot bearing is you might be able to see it we'll see it better with the clutch off but it's back in there i'll show you guys how to remove that too but there's the spec stage two clutch ours 2.5 um we're gonna remove that by removing, I think these are 15s, I think, if I remember. But you've got six of them. One, two, three, four, five, six. And then it's held on by that and dowels. So we're gonna remove that. And uh, that means the pressure plate and the disc will come out. And then we'll be able to see the flywheel, which is what I have to get to so I can send it off. My buddy's taking it to Corsicana for me tonight to get it resurfaced for the new clutch. So, really curious to see what this disc looks like and how bad that flywheel is going to be because we smoked it pretty good. That's going to be kind of fun to see. So, uh, get that off real quick and then uh, we'll see. There it is. Yeah. It got pretty hot. Pretty, pretty hot. There's even, I mean, you can barely feel it, but there's even a uh, slight difference. From where the clutch rode to where it is but i mean you can definitely feel it looks like it feels like something right here this really dark one you see it feels like almost something got caught right there because there's a you, i don't know if you can hear that but pretty big imperfection there. there's that pilot bearing i was speaking of we'll be removing that too um just to tell you what guys what that is that is a, a little tripod stand holding pushing up on the front of the motor to tilt it back. Um, makes it easier to get the transmission out and then also to get the gun like up to the bolts up here, the impact to remove the flywheel uh, or to remove the pressure plate. Um, let's go look at the flywheel. So this flywheel disc itself, I've seen people reuse worse. You can see other than for these little grooves, it is very, very, very shiny on both sides. Very, very shiny. I mean, there's, you can see ref, like the mirror ref, reflection off. It's not wet. I mean, it's not wet. It's just shiny. See, it's got the same hot, so, hot spots. <sighs> same hot spots. 
It was cooked for sure. We cooked it. That's called glazing. That's what this is called. It's called glazing. Brake pads do it too when they get really, really hot. Um, I wouldn't advise it, but if you were in a pinch and you know just need to do something, you could scuff this up with some like a uh, 80 grit. Put an 80 grit on a big block and back and forth to get a texture back in this. Knock that glazing off. And uh, if you did it right, you know, did it this way and then this way, you could probably flatten it back out because you can tell there's still quite a bit of friction material there. Um, I don't know. I mean, here. There's a key. And you can see that there's quite a bit of friction material there still. And then you could do the same to this pressure plate here. And, uh,. Same to that side, and then you could probably still reuse that. I mean, it's it's glazed. It's, it was hot. It was cooking, but I mean, there's still enough friction material there on both sides. I mean, if you got in a pinch, um, you you could use this. I mean, I might even just hold on to it just in case. Um, you know, just rainy day something or a future build or something. Um, just you know, save a little bit of money. Um, but yeah, that flywheel would have to be resurfaced. Um, it, it, it is toast. All because of a clutch cable. Gotta love it. But uh, yeah, that's also a 10 and a half inch disc and we're going to an 11. Luckily, you cannot do that unless you have an aftermarket flywheel that allows you to. You can see there's some holes on the outside, or the inside and on the outside. It's because this is a spec um, lightweight steel flywheel and it allows you to use multiple size clutches um, a factory flywheel does not allow you to do that um, so um, I'll, I per the ram clutch I purchased is an 11 inch so like I said we'll go over that um, tomorrow when we get this back so all I'm gonna do now is remove these which I think are 16s um, the pressure plate bolts were 13s or whatever that converts to in standard. 13 was slightly loose, but it worked. Um, these, I think, are 16s or 17s. We're going to remove those and get that flywheel off. And then what you're going to want to do is button everything up. Um, don't want to leave nothing hanging because the car. I'm going to have to push the car out. Now, if you had a vehicle that was staying stationary, that's fine. You could just leave stuff like it is. Like I already put that bell housing bolt back to hold the oil filter in location so it don't drag on the ground or anything um, but like I gotta move the car out of the shop for the for during the work day so like all this the harness the clutch cable you're, I'm gonna want to zip tile that up so it's not dragging and get caught up under a wheel um, but yeah so let me go ahead and um, remove those eight this would be um, when you hear Teal talking about a <clears throat> just a little tip or pointer when you hear people talking about um, Oh, my four six and eight bolts are my four six is a six bolt. That's what they're referring to is the crank. The amount of bolts that the flywheel is held onto by the crank. Is one better than the other? It's never been proven either way. So um, usually they, um, let me get this correct so I don't mess this up. The Windsors, which were the earlier Mustang motors, so 99 and then early 01, were eight bolts. And then the Romeos, which were late 01 to 04 and on were six bolt cranks um, so like when you have to look up certain certain parts of your um, of your motor um, and ask you what year it is if you know pre-01 or late 01 and up or pre-01 and to 99 it's because that's what they're needing to know is if it's a eight or six bolt crank um, another thing is if it's a 99 through 01 your vehicle came factory with a T45, which is what mine came factory with. Uh, late 01 to 04 and on, would use a TR3650, which is what I got built and installed in here. Um, so just a little tip for you guys, but I'm gonna go ahead and remove those and um, get that flywheel off. Okay guys, that's it, done. Um, it is, let's see if my phone will tell me. Um, 554. Um, I, oh, I'm sorry, 654. I started at about 545. I get off at 530. Um, 
So yeah, you know, an hour, an hour, film, maybe a little more filming. Um, realistically, with the right tools and stuff, you can do it in about 45 minutes, have it out, and then button it back up, probably 15 minutes, an hour, about two hours, you can have it done. Um, so yeah, I mean, that's it. It's good to go. Um, I'm gonna push it out in the morning. Uh, we'll go through a work day and then I'll push it back in tomorrow when I get the pressure plate um, Then we'll be able to put it back together. And I'll show you guys how to do that So this is yes, it's gonna be a two-part video. I'm sorry. It sucks, but it's just uh, easier that way I'll we're gonna try to edit and get this one up tonight when I get home um, The only thing I got left to do now is call the wife and I ask her to please come get me from work So I can have a guy and go home tonight um, But that, I mean that's it. Um, I'm gonna take you guys over to the toolbox real quick show you guys um, all the tools I use it's not very many and um, yeah I mean that's it so flip this around okay guys so here it is trim tool right here a 13 inch wrench a that is a 10 inch no an 8 inch wiggle or 8 millimeter I'm sorry 8 millimeter wiggle sock and extension a uh, if you don't have one of those you could just use a wiggle and an 8mm shallow. This is a 17 for the flywheel bolts to the crank. That's a 13 for the pressure plate to flywheel. That is a 12mm wiggle 12 point socket for the um, drive shaft bolts to the yoke. That is a shallow 13 quarter inch and a shallow 10 quarter inch. There's a shallow rent ratchet. Those are to take off those two wires to the starter. Your two long extensions with your like 13 um, wiggle socket, or you could use a, um, a wiggle extension with a shallow 13. And I mean that that's it. I had a um, my 3 8 inch impact. You could use hand tools though. They'll be a little tight, but you can still break them loose. Um, impacts help if you have air available. But I mean that that that's it. <clears throat> Here's another picture of the flywheel. Though I mean it's burnt. It got hot. But I mean that's all the tools you'll need. Not very many. As you guys can see, it's not very many tools. Pretty simple to do. Um, I mean, if you have any questions, just ask. And uh, I mean, don't be afraid to get out there and rent yourself. It saves you a lot of money. Labor is expensive now. Um, you know, like I said, if you have any questions, just ask. And uh, if, you, if you're not comfortable doing it, take it to a shop. But uh, I'm trying to help you guys out and maybe save you guys a couple dollars in the meanwhile. Again, thank you for watching Loud But Slow. Please subscribe for more. And uh, see you guys soon. Fish out.